that make that brings me back to a thought I had when you're talking about recruiting, and this has always been something where I thought, well, if I pursued the college path in the future and I was involved in recruitment, my secret weapon for recruitment would be to focus on fairly mediocre programs and find the best athletes in that program, mm -hmm. right? You know, and I think that, and you were talking about Connecticut and those programs, there's a lot of programs that are just very well-developed programs mm -hmm. and they have really good coaching. Um, but I think in any program out there, if you're rising to the top of your, your, the group that you're in, you know, even at that top, maybe a 750 athlete, you know, in a sort program or 740 athlete in, in a program, if your program's not performing well, you don't have very good coaching, then, then that limitation, the ERG score is, is due to your environment. And sure. Good. And I feel like those are, those athletes, if you can find the fit, you know, if they have the psychology and the attitude and the work ethic, then those athletes are, would be a gold mine for a college recruiter. You, you, know. take, you take that athlete that's from that smaller program, mm -hmm. right? And you surround them with, with like-minded athletes. Mm -hmm. and, and ideally, they're gonna grow and, and really explode when they get in, into that system. Yeah. But I think you have to also, in, in that concept, it's you have to be very particular too. You have to find the athletes that, that want to do the work. And this comes back to my idea of those metrics, right? Finding the grinders, the workers, uh, the ones that are, are, are willing to do the right thing when no one's watching because they're going to need to do that to take that 750 and become a 720 and, and, and below. Uh, I do think one of the, the, the pitfalls of all these great, you know, talented Connecticut programs is um, there is a brand that they also become um, kind of in love with at the next level because there's a lot mm -hmm. of chatter like hey oh so and so i'm talking to this school i'm talking to that school and it becomes more about the brand yeah. than about the fit and this comes back to your idea of of these smaller programs you know with the di kind of the diamond in the rough right exactly. i've definitely recruited some of those types of athletes and it just i think you have to be really um peel back the layers and make sure that they are, are going to be willing to, to do the work when they get in the program. But I think those can be really special athletes when you surround them with the environment that they can flourish in, mm -hmm. you know, and not shy away, you know, a shrinking, uh, um, uh, you know, get almost if the environment's too grand for them, mm -hmm. I feel like I've also seen some of the athletes kind of struggle where they were the queen of the castle. Right in their high school program yep. and now you take that person and you think okay you pluck them into your system and they're going to be surrounded with athletes and they're going to continue killing it mm -hmm. i've seen them kind of fade away before as well so they that's like being the, 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 the queen of the castle in a small pond. yeah yeah, whatever yeah. It be. and that was that led into my next question was like you know having recruited those athletes how do you how do they perform are they able to make that next step up yeah. you know and uh, and kind of embrace what's around them. And I would talk to my athletes too when they were looking at colleges and this kind of defeats the purpose of what we started earlier about trying to get more diversity. But I would definitely say to an athlete if they were looking between two schools that were equal on other other facets other than the competitiveness is that if you as an athlete you're going to learn more and develop more as an athlete if you are a third or second boat athlete in a fast program than if mm. you're a first boat athlete in a smaller program. And, and that's, you know, that's a hard balance toward what we were talking about earlier of a, of a desire to see more diversity in there. But yeah. um, I think I think it's interesting when you talk about that because I, I think about that all the time. I've I've lost a lot of recruits to great programs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 you know UVA got going off to UVA and they and they sit in, the, in you know Murph or Kevin and do amazing things. But there is second, third, fourth boaters where I think to myself if those athletes were were my program they could have been first boaters. But that wasn't their journey. Like right. that's not what they wanted. And, and I, I, I kind of stopped being frustrated. I'm at a point where like, okay, like that's what they want, great. And, and they go off and have awesome careers at, at UVA. For me, it's, it's finding the right fit. It comes back to that word. I know I use that word a lot, but I, I do believe in it. And, I, and when I'm on the phone with an athlete, I know when I'm connecting with them. And I know when I feel like this athlete's the right fit. And so we have this whole, you know, marking system in our Google Doc where we're marking, you know, uh, ranking the athletes and there's those athletes that I mark, like I had the connection. 
And, and for me, that goes a long way. And I don't get all those athletes. All those kids don't matriculate to UMass. But we go a long way through the process and, and get d pretty deep with them because I know it's, it's a really good fit. So I really, I'm really intrigued by um, peeling back the layers and asking the questions that maybe other coaches aren't asking these, these recruits. And I think for me, that's when I find out the most. I, should, I, I, I talk about non-rowing things a good amount of times. So if I'm on a phone with 30, 40 minutes on a phone with an athlete, mm -hmm. I'll talk about their basketball, I'll talk about stuff that's going on with school with them, yeah. because I find that I learn the most about them when I'm not asking them the kind of the cookie cutter questions. Well, I think they're prepared for the cookie cutter. Oh, absolutely. They're prepared for the rowing, and so you're not getting the genuine yeah. person, right? And so when you're able to kind of expand the conversation beyond that, you're getting a little bit more of that person, the less they're prepared. Yeah. It's harder, you know, I'm 45 oh, yeah. right now. And, and, these, and, and, and 16, 17, sometimes 18 year old, high school girl, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's been a challenge. I've had to evolve and yeah. uh, it's uh, surely keeps me on my toes. Um, probably make too many dad jokes now that I have a couple kids, but uh, <laughs> it's been fun. I, I, it does, I, I do feel like it keeps me youthful. Mm -hmm. You know, being being in touch with with what high school athletes are doing right now, yeah. and like I, I come back to what I said before, the harder I work at my craft of recruiting and bringing the right athletes, uh, the more enjoyable this boathouse is going to be, and I really believe that. And any, I just I I, I I I struggle to watch a head coach just delegate and say, "Oh, you do all the recruiting," and just bring me. And I'll talk to a couple of the top tier athletes. I just. It's not who I am. It's not where you know what I was all about from my my early days of continuing to work until we get it right. Like I have to be willing to work as hard as any of my assistant coaches on the recruiting front, uh, and that's a sacrifice. You know, it's 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 long hours, but we are pretty fortunate in in what we do as 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 our livelihood. Yeah. You know, being able to work with an amazingly talented, uh, intelligent group of student athletes as we do, like we're really, really lucky. Uh, and and, and I, I, I never forget that and I enjoy the whole process and I'm, I continue to feel like I'm pretty energized to put the work in right now to take this sleeping giant you know, back to where they were in the late 90s, which was, was a strong presence at the, at the NCAAs. I know it's a huge hill to climb, mm -hmm. I, I get that, but I'm surely energized and I feel fully prepared to, 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 to do that. And so uh, we're just starting.